Hello everyone, it's Charlie here at the beginning uh, of this episode. Uh, I just wanted to come in and say that this episode was recorded before the weekend, before all of the stories were out about all those wrestlers being absolutely despicable humans. Uh, So unfortunately I'm using Jimmy Havoc in this episode, but he won't be in any episodes going forward, neither will David Starr. And if there's anyone else who's had uh, anything about them who's currently being used in my series, please let me know because I don't want to use anyone like that because, honestly, just fuck all of them. (laughs) Uh, Using your influence and power like that is disgusting and I'm just kind of in awe of the bravery shown by all those people who have come out against all of these powerful, famous people, and hopefully from now on, wrestling and specifically British wrestling scene can improve and not be so disgraceful. Um, so yeah, I just I just wanted to to let you know that I won't be using anyone uh, who's had accusations against them going forward. Um, obviously I can't, well, if I can, I don't know, but I can't go through and get rid of them from other shows, so if, like, I I show NXT, um, and, you know, like, Matt Riddle is on there or something, uh, I don't think there's much I can do about that, but if there is, please let me know down below, and I will, uh, change that. Uh, but yeah, so, that's it. I think um, I'll leave you with the episode now and um, yeah, just let me know if, if I am using anyone who turns out to be a horrible, disgraceful human and I will stop because I don't want, you know, I don't want someone to watch this and not be able to enjoy it because of uh, the, the wrestlers I'm using. So um, yeah, uh, enjoy the episode. Sorry to start this on a bit of a somber note, but I feel like I had to say something okay uh yeah bye enjoy the episode hello and welcome to episode number eight of aew rise to the top on tew 2020 this is a series where we have taken over as tony khan in aew and we are trying to get them up to the heights of wwe and become the number one wrestling company in the world And so today, we have got all of the fallout from AEW Fighter Fest. So uh, we've got a great episode of Dark coming up. Then we've got a massive episode of Dynamite with three championship matches. We've got the uh, TNT Open Challenge with Cody Rhodes. We've got the Moxley vs. Brian Cage main event for the AEW World Championship. And we've also got the Broken Bad Boys taking on Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega for the Tag Team Championships. But Dynamite is not the only huge show we have in this episode. We've got a massive episode of Dark. We're seeing B Priestley make her in-ring debut in the series. We're seeing both Brandon Cutler and Peter Avalon in action after their matchup at the pre-show for Fighter Fest. And our main event for Dark is a 10-man battle royal to see who will be facing... Cody tomorrow night for the AEW TNT Championship. So without further ado, let's get straight into Dark. So we are here with the first matchup. Colt Cabana, again another man making his debut in the series, going up against Peter Avalon. And Colt Cabana managed to defeat Peter Avalon in just under 7 minutes with a Colt 45. Colt Cabana had a rating of 53, Peter Avalon had a 34. And Colt Cabana has a groundswell of public support, which is nice. And that got a rating of 48, which is not too bad for the opening. Uh, Let's move on to the next matchup. B Priestley making her in-ring debut in the series, taking on Emi Sakura. So, in a terrible match, B Priestley defeated Emi Sakura by pinfall. Um, This got a 26, that's awful. A pretty vocal crowd didn't seem to have seen B Priestley. 
but she's so good. Why not? Um, pre-show workers as well. Okay, that's really disappointing. Uh, B Priest got a thirty-two, and Emmy Sakura got a forty-three. I really thought B Priestley was going to be like really good in this series. I think she's great in real life. Disappointed by that, to be honest. Oh well. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next segment. So a video is shown detailing that next week we will see MJF take on Wardlow on Dynamite. This got a forty-six rating. Obviously, at Fighter Fest we saw. MJF fire and turn on Wardlow and Wardlow has gone to AEW management and asked for a matchup. But how will this go now knowing that MJF is one of the new four horsemen? Uh, let's move on to the next matchup. And next up we are seeing Brandon Cutler take on Kip Sabian. Brandon Cutler obviously picking up the win in that worst in AEW matchup between himself and Peter Avalon at Fighter Fest on the pre-show, and he manages to follow it up with another massive upset victory over Kip Sabian, getting that surprise roll-up. Uh, Kip Sabian had a performance of 44, and Brandon Cutler had a 38. They didn't like having a match outside of the pre-show between workers that don't have investment in, and that got a rating of 28, which isn't too bad. Uh, let's move on to the next segment. So next up we have a montage showing Moxley rehabbing the injury he sustained last week at Dynamite and preparing for his match next week. Uh, so it's got a 66 rating, the Man vs. Machine storyline um, advanced. Excalibur was weak. Okay, just stuff. So, what? Yeah, okay. That's alright, 66 is a good rating. And now let's move on to our main event of the evening. The 10-man battle royal. So this is featuring Austin Gunn, Shima, Dustin Rhodes, Isaiah Cassidy, Jimmy Havoc, Jungle Boy, Michael Nakazawa, Orange Cassidy, QT Marshall, and Sonny Kiss. So this is once again to see who will be facing Cody tomorrow night at Dynamite for the AEW TNT Championship. So the final four members of the match were Jimmy Havoc, Austin Gunn, Dustin Rhodes, and Orange Cassidy. Dustin Rhodes manages to take out Austin Gunn, but then Jimmy Havoc flips Dustin over the ropes, just leaving himself and Orange Cassidy left. And it is Orange Cassidy who picks up the win and is going on to face Cody tomorrow night. Austin Gunn got the most eliminations over the course of this matchup as well. Uh, the TNT champion, TNT Open Challenge storyline has advanced. Uh, Orange Cassidy benefited from having a groundswell of public support, and by working the crowd, this match started to get the fans responding, and that got a rating of 57, which is very good for a dark main event. I will take that in a heartbeat. Um, so now let's go to the end screen and see how this show did overall. 47. You know what? That's okay. 47 is alright. I'm really disappointed about B Priestley. Um, that's really annoying, but I will just keep using her, and I'll keep getting the negatives until she's good enough, because I think she bloody is great. So, screw you, game. I'm being my own man. Um, so, we will now leave you here, and we'll be back in a few moments for the huge episode of Dynamite. See you soon. Hello, and welcome back to Dynamite. The episode with all of the fallout from Fighter Fest. As you already know, we've got those three huge championship matches. We also have FTR's in ring debut after the statement they made closing out Fighter Fest, attacking the tag champs after the match and leaving them laid out. And then walking out to the, to the ramp to be joined by Sean Spears and MJF, announcing the return of the Four Horsemen. We've got all of that to come. But first up, We've got Dr. Britt Baker in a matchup against Yuka Sakazaki. Britt Baker obviously uh, beat, defeated Chris Statlander in the pre-show of Fighter Fest and looks to continue her momentum here, and she does by defeating Yuka Sakazaki with the lockjaw. Uh, this got a 29. 
that's fine. I was expecting it to be about 20. I was expecting it to be like a mid-20, so that's actually quite good. Baker got a 42. Sakazaki got a 35. I knew they were going to be turned off, uh, and I knew it was a poor way to start the show. But lifting the crowd got them ready and buzzing, which is what I wanted. Uh, so let's see what happens next. The new four horsemen come to the ring along with Tully Blanchard. Spears has a microphone and addresses the audience. I came out to this ring last week and I told you I was done being at the bottom of the ladder. And I think at Fighter Fest, I proved that. Not only did I easily dispatch one of the top free agents in the world, Rockstar Spud, I debuted the newest form of the greatest team wrestling has ever seen. We have FTR, the greatest tag team in the world. MJF, the fastest rising star in professional wrestling. And of course me, Sean Spears, the big thing. We are putting the whole locker room on notice. We are here, we are the four horsemen, and we're bringing the apocalypse to AEW. Uh, so that got a rating of 47. The F the rest storyline has advanced but lost heat. The Four Horsemen storyline has also advanced. Sean Spears did a masterful job improvising interactions with the crowd. That's what we like to see. Yes. 47 rating. And let's move on to the next matchup. And we have Scorpio Sky after turning on SCU at Fighter Fest comes here and dispatches of Facade in just over six minutes, giving a 64 rating for him and a 38 for Facade. A potential future heel turn for Scorpio Sky. Yeah, I really, I didn't know how to do heel turns. I thought you just put in the like dirt sheet notes, the um, road agent notes even. Turn, and they would turn. I didn't realise you had to go on and do them, so um, I've sorted that out now. Uh, lifting the crowd didn't matter, they were already pretty hot. Ah, okay. Um, it's got a 54, which is pretty good, and Scorpio Sky looks like he's grabbing a microphone. Let's see what he has to say. People want to know why? I don't owe you people shit. Sky drops the mic and leaves the ring. The SCU Never storyline has advanced. The segment got a rating of 64, and let's now handle the changes. Turn heel. I don't think it's going to go very well. Oh, it was a complete success. That's good. I didn't think that was... It said, like, he turned recently, so it might not be good. So, But that's nice. Um, so let's move on now to the next matchup. And we have the AEW TNT Championship Open Challenge. Well, it wasn't really an open challenge this week. As Orange Cassidy, earlier in the episode, we saw he won the opportunity to face Cody tonight. And in a bout that had good heat and decent wrestling, Cody defeated Orange Cassidy with a crossroads, meaning Cody has now had seven successful title defences. That number is getting mighty, mighty big. Uh, this rating got a 67, which is good. Cody had a performance of 64. Orange Cassidy had a performance of 59. The TNT Open Challenge storyline has advanced and gained heat. Uh, Jim Ross and Excalibur, all the announcing was good. And Cody and Orange both have uh, public support, which is nice. Uh, so let's move on to the next segment. And a video plays showing that Tennille Dashwood will make her in-ring debut next week. I got 41. Nice little, just a quick little video package to let you know that she will be making her debut next week. Uh, and she's getting better at her gimmick, which is very good. Uh, let's move on to the next matchup. And next up, we have FTR's in-ring debut going up against Private Party. And they do manage to pick up a win in their debut when Cash Wheeler pinned Cassidy with a Shatter Machine. Uh, this got a rating of 66, which is good. Um, really even ratings across the board, actually. 64 for Wheeler, 63 for Harwood. 65 for Quen and 63 for Cassidy. The F the Rest and Four Horsemen storylines both advanced, uh, and the F the Rest storyline gained heat. And obviously, we know that we knew that they were going to have excellent chemistry teaming together. But it's nice that the game recognizes that. FTR, the first members of the newly formed Four Horsemen we've seen in action so far, and uh, 
a very good start. Uh, let's move on to the next segment. And next up, we have cheerleader Melissa off of her loss at Fighter Fest to Hikaru Shida for the wo- Women's Championship, looking to get back to winning ways here. And she does manage to defeat Big Swall by pinfall. Uh, this got a 44 rating. Uh, Melissa had a 54, Big Swell had a 33, and The Girl Next Door versus The Cheerleader storyline has advanced with this segment. Um, they have great chemistry. Nice, that's good. And um, the match was poorly placed. The crowd were already hot and didn't need working. Okay, so I put the uh, the wrong thing into that. And next up, we have the Tag Team Championship match between The Broken Bad Boys and Hangman Page and Kenny Omega. In a bout that had good heat and decent wrestling... Omega and Page defeated the Broken Bad Boys in 25 minutes and 17 seconds when Hangman Page pinned Joey Janela. That is defence number 5 of the Tag Team Championships for Page and Omega. And uh, Kenny Omega was head and shoulders above everyone else. He's got a rating of 70, which is very nice. The F The Rest storyline has advanced and gained heat, which is good. Uh, Hardy had a 49, Janela had a 48. Matt Hardy was really off his game, apparently, so... Um, Page had a 67, and Omega had an 86. Um, the match dragged towards the end as it was too long for the workers to really keep an all-out pace going. I did do the, like, the slow build. Which one is it? Road Agents. Did I? Where does it... I thought I did a, it for a slow build. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We got a 70. That's very nice. Um, so still... Your tag team champions is Kenny Omega and Adam Page. Uh, let's move on to the next segment. <laughs> yes! Yes! Uh, so a video shows Death Triangle sat in a flashy apartment. Pack. We have proven that the three of us are unstoppable. But what do we have to show for it? Nothing. Why do we go out every damn week and bust our asses for you if you're not going to do anything for us? We are demanding a six-man tag team title, and we are demanding that we are the champions. We deserve the honour, we deserve the gold, and most of all, we deserve the money. Make it happen. So, the first champ storyline has started with this segment. Uh, Pack enjoy... Oh, mate, 85. 85 is so good. Um, So, it, it looks like... You know, Pac's given AEW management something to think about there, maybe bringing in a six-man tag team championship for uh, all of these guys to fight over. 85. Death Triangle are... It's almost not fair having these three guys as a team. They're so good. Um, Let's move on to our main event of the evening. And here we are. The AEW Championship match between Jon Moxley and Brian Cage. We've been building up to this since episode one of this series. And still, your AEW World Champion is Jon Moxley, picking up the win in just under 15 minutes with a paradigm shift. Uh, Moxley makes defense number three of the AEW World title. And this got a 76, which is a really nice main event. That might be... No, it's not a highest race match. It's up there, though. Um, Moxley had an earring performance of 90. 90? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, Brian Cage had an earring performance of 68. Uh, the Man vs. Machine storyline has advanced and gained... He- oh, I meant to end the storyline here. That's okay. I can end it afterwards. It doesn't make any difference. Um, there were times where there was a definite lack of psychology on display and the match had a tendency to drift a little. That's okay. John Moxley and Brian Cage have great chemistry. Very nice. So, uh, a pretty successful show, all in all. Uh, Let's move on to the final screen and see what the ratings say. 72. You know what? I'll bloody... I'll take a 72. That might... No, it's not our highest. I think it's our second highest rated show. But um, that increased our popularity in 30 regions. And this is the first... I put more thought into where matches we're going to go this episode than I have before. Like, I tried to put, like, you know, like, I knew that Britt Baker, Yuka Sakazaki, and a squash match with Scorpio Sky would be lower, so I tried to put them, you know, towards... I was trying to get it so it was, like, low to high. And, I mean, matches-wise, 
it kind of works. I mean, I had cheerleader Melissa um, defeat Big Swell, which was only a forty-four, but you know, like it kind of it kind of works, and that definitely helped in the overall rating, which is good. So, um, something to think about for me going forward when I book these shows. Um, so now let's finish the show. Let's go. Let's see the emails. Let's see how NXT did. We might actually have a chance of beating them this week. Maybe. Who knows? Um, and then like, there's one broadcasting thing I want to have a quick look at before we end the episode. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, here we are back on the home screen. Uh, AAA has new faces. Who's that? Oh, it doesn't tell you. Okay, fair enough. Uh, new Rob Van Dam feud. Cool. Uh, so let's have a look how NXT got on. 69! We beat NXT for the first time in this series. Thank God. Um, what did they have? Matt Riddle defeated Dex Loomis to retain the NXT Championship. Brian Kendrick defeated Damon Priest in a cage match. Sounds good. Looks good. But uh, we finally beat NXT for once. Thank God. Um, let's look at the uh, All Japan Summer Action as well. 52. Uh, I don't really know much about All Japan to be honest, so uh, none of these names really mean anything to me, but I mean, if you if you like All Japan, there you go. Uh, and let's look at Ring of Honor as well, 74, Ring of Honor also, you know, they're, they're beating us a lot of the time as well, which is uh, not great. Uh, yeah, some, some good stuff there, looks like. Okay, so, oh, incoming for stardom, uh, it's just the same thing. Okay, let's look at the emails, so... Uh, we got 1.4 million viewers, which I think might be our highest so far. 1.4 million. Um, that's pretty good. And then just drug test fees, as usual. Um, so we got 1.4. What did they NXT got? NXT only got a little bit more than us, and they've got much better um, distribution. So let's. I just wanted to have one quick look at the broadcasting. I know it must feel like I'm doing broadcasting in every bloody episode at this point. But I just want to look for Mexico because um, I feel like they're not getting any television. Oh, they are apparently. Bigger, but that might just be for Dark. So um, I don't think they're getting Dynamite. No, yeah, they're getting Dark and um, they're getting that stuff. So uh, I might put... See if we can put... Dynamite on here as well. Uh, let's do it for a year. We're probably not, we're not going to get anything else. Um, late evening, late night. There we go. Uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, so this is just for Dynamite. Yes. Okay, that's good. So now we're going to get Dynamite shown in Mexico as well, uh, which will help bolster the popularity there. Uh, so I think that is everything for this episode. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And let me know in the comments if you like The Horseman, if you like, you know, how, how you think the series is going, what what you've done in your series, what you've done in your games. That would be awesome as well. I'd love to hear about that. Um, I promise I won't steal any ideas. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it very much. And uh, I will see you all next time. Goodbye.